Hey folks, one of the things that I like to do a lot is read or get customer feedback by talking to customers, by talking to users, potential users, and so on. It's, it's also one of the things that is really hard to do, like finding users that are available to have a 30 minute conversation to discuss your product with you is really hard. So there's a, a, a number of things that I do. Namely, one that I started doing recently was to look into G2 reviews in order to understand how the users perceive our product. And so I'll show you an example of how I would use this data. It was only very recently that I met with the graphics folks, which is a company that I'm working for currently. And, um, and with this tool, I'm able as a product growth person to be able to do analysis on my own, which is really fascinating to me, which I, I couldn't do before. Uh, I always had to rely on help from data scientists, data analysts. I still do, but now I'm a little bit more dangerous. Let me show you an example. So let's look at Snowflake and Databricks. These are all the reviews that I could get from G2. Uh, there are 695 uh, reviews here. And uh, let's let's see what this data what this data is telling us. So once uh, once uh, we look at the data, I, I saved some insights just so we can go uh, quicker here in the video. So let's start with the first one. First thing that you see here in the data is that Snowflake has many more reviews than Databricks, which is fair because Snowflake has been around for for longer. But uh, the the devil is in the details. So. Once you explore, uh, once you explore this uh, data set further, you'll realize that Snowflake's reviews all, are almost all from um, between between 2019 and 2020, uh, and this creates there's there's no problem here. But the insight, to me at least, if I'm looking at the, at the reviews of uh, of Snowflake, I'm thinking that they 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 might be outdated. After all, it's been like two three years since the bulk of the reviews have been published. So the perception that is being created by G2 about Snowflake may be outdated. Whereas for Databricks, there's a huge growth here after mid 2021, starting of 2021. So they're fresher reviews. So one action that I would do if I were working for Snowflake would be to go in and, and get more reviews. But let me, We'll continue because uh, there's obviously more. Now, when looking at this data, again, comparing Snowflake with, uh, with Databricks, if we look at, let me search for that, uh, for that one. If we look at the score, which is this chart here at the bottom right, we'll notice that the majority of these reviews, the bulk of these reviews are positive. Like they're, they're 4.0 and five, between four and five, the score. Right, but but Snowflake has lower scores. There are some reviews with lower scores, so apparently there's better reviews for Databricks. Let's dive deeper a little bit. Now, if we look at the volume of reviews, which is still still here, let's look at not the volume, the source. Where do where do these reviews come from? You'll look here at this chart here. There's organic, vendor. So organic, I'm assuming, I, I, I'm assuming that organic are just people that go there out of their free will and give a review. And uh, you'll notice that Databricks has the highest percentage. So 35%, a little bit more than 35% of organic reviews versus 6.93. And the, and the, the, I, I will contrast this with how many reviews are incentivized. So it's, it seems that, that the majority of the reviews for Snowflake were incentivized. Maybe they paid them, maybe they gave them an Amazon voucher, whatever it was, but it also uh, makes me question a little bit the, 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 not the credibility, but the completeness of the perception that gets created. But this is normal, I guess, with, with sites like these. Then let's look at the industry adoption, which is also something that was, that was very interesting to me. Let me, let me go and look for, uh, for industry here. There we go. It's this, this, this big one right here. So here you'll notice that the, the, the majority of the industries like information technology, computer software, airlines, airlines and aviation management, et cetera, they're 
they're they're they're close, right? They're close here, but not too close. But the difference is between eight and twelve percent is not that big. But when you look at this, when you look at this from this perspective, like the top three, the top five for Snowflake, the top industries that are um, that are represented in this data set is slightly different. So computer software, information technology, financial services, and marketing. So that's what we see here, but for, for uh, Databricks, it's slightly different. So also financial services, computer software, et cetera, but you'll see here airlines and aviation. And for airlines and aviation, there's a big, there's a big blue bar. The entire data set is the gray bar and the selection is the blue bar. So it means that essentially Databricks seems to be landing more deals for airlines and aviation. An interesting insight, is Snowflake sales team or go-to-market team missing this opportunity? It sounds like, at least as far as the reviews are telling us, it, it sort of makes sense. Uh, when we look at market segments of the two, they're, gonna, they're similar. Uh, but I guess the fun part, at least for me, is the sentiment analysis. Are these reviews Obviously, they're hot. They're, 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 uh, and I'm going to use something else. So you look at the review, and we have the score of the review right here, and you'll you'll see that the majority obviously is positive. We could say if we select the fours and the fives, seventy four percent of the reviews are very positive. But are they really? So I did a, a, a clustering exercise of these reviews, and I did a sentiment analysis. I asked Graphex to do a sentiment analysis for me in order to understand if the reviews are really positive or negative despite the score. And what you'll notice here is that in the majority of the reviews are positive. Let me actually color this by positive. Let me clear the filter here and color again. Each of these bubbles here is one review and the majority of the reviews are, are green, which means they're, they're more positive than, than negative. And this, this tells us that there's sort of a bias there, but there are negative reviews and it would be interesting to understand what are people highlighting as negative about Snowflake or, or Databricks. I don't want to do that, at least not in a, in a video that I'm going to publish, but I'll do the opposite. I'll check the positives. That's more constructive. Before I get into the positives, let's look at, again, an overall picture of this. You'll, you'll have Databricks here and Snowflake here. Snowflake, when you compare as far as positive reviews and neutral reviews, Databricks is slightly above, so 47%, 50% versus 47, 41% versus 37%. And negative reviews, it's 9% versus 16%. So here there's a big difference. Again, Databricks reviews seem to be more positive. If we go, if we go deep into the data and try to understand, let's say, why are Databricks reviews more positive? So let me, uh, let me filter this uh, to just choose Databricks. These are all the Databricks reviews that are positive. And you can sort of start to see what the, the themes that were inferred automatically. So one that stands out is this one, Notebook, Python, Spark, uh, Mflow, et cetera, et cetera. So what this is actually interesting because the majority of the positive reviews are these for, uh, again, for Databricks. And it's also very in line with their value proposition. So I went ahead and, and I read some of these uh, reviews that are now filtered here. And what you can infer from this is that the people appreciate that Databricks allows them to use uh, other languages than SQL, which is uh, part of their key value proposition. Finally, you'll be able to do things like try to understand what are the Databricks uh, clusters that are the most positive comments or the most common themes for Databricks, for Snowflake, and so on and so forth. And uh, yeah, you could, uh, you could do a bunch of things. So as I go through this analysis, what I normally do is I start to save these insights like I did here in this list. And I, sh I will either create action items or log them as opportunities for, uh, for follow-up later. So 
Yeah, that's it. That's how I look at uh, G2 uh, reviews. In this case, for a little bit of competitive analysis, but also for opportunity, opportunity research. Hope this helps. I'll share the data set as a link for you to, to play with. Cheers.